Guys, hi. I've been tuning vocals professionally since 2010, and I want to help you improve your skills. <laughs> Today, we're going over a quick and concise guide to getting Melodyne Studio up and running. So as you open Melodyne, this is what you should see. First, let's go to File, Import Audio, Command-I. Today, I just have an instrumental and a vocal. First thing you should do is check the algorithm. Based on its analysis of the audio material, Melodyne will have chosen to either use Melodic, Percussive, or its Polyphonic algorithm. I said my default is Melodic because I'm mostly tuning vocals, but if you're tuning all sorts of instruments and different stuff, Automatic might be the way to go. The universal algorithm is maybe one of the best I've ever heard in any DAW, Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic. Uh, for example, if you want to alter the pitch, timing, or tempo of an entire piece of music, this is the algorithm you use. Percussive is pretty obvious. It's for percussive, drums, anything in that nature. Melodics just for one vocal on one vocal track. But if you have one vocal track with two, three, four, or choir singing together, it's probably best to use one of the polyphonic algorithms. Polyphonic is also the one you want to use if you're tuning guitars, pianos, violins, most string instruments. I use sustain mostly, but decay is also good for certain situations. Just pick the one you need. For me, I'm tuning a vocal. We're going to melodic. And you can set that as your default. Let's get to know these keys. This is pretty much the same thing as the smart tool and pro tools as the main tool. You use this a lot. It's nice because depending on where you put your cursor, you can do different things. You move the note. You get the cut tool. You still have the slide function here. And then when you go to the edges, you can move the length of the note. This isn't something I'm really ever doing, but it's a nice feature. Just a quick overview of the rest of the tools that I use primarily. You have your pitch tool. This is kind of one of the main ones I use. I go back and forth between this and you know what I call the smart tool. This represents the pitch drift tool. You want to use this most frequently when you're tuning a vocal that you want to make sure it still sounds realistic. Watch what it does to the vibrato here. You didn't minimize it, you didn't lose anything, you just kind of flattened it out. Singers often are not staying on one note as they do this vibrato. This is really one of the main tools I use as I navigate this program. Uh, the other one that's really helpful is pitch modulation, but you wanna be careful when you're using this. You can see if you go too heavy, you minimize this, and this is this is pretty much what auto-tune sounds like. Nobody sings like that. Like Kobayashi. <laughs> the next one I use constantly is the cut tool. Eladin does a great job cutting things for you and even showing you sibilance, which you do not need to move or tune. But if it's not cut, make sure you go through and cut things, cut ambience, cut notes. Pretty much any time you need a note to move somewhere, separate from somewhere else, maybe right here. Even without listening to this, a lot of the time they really want to slide up from the note below. Help them land exactly where they should here. Just gives you more of an ability to control things. Up here is pretty much your transport bar. Space bar to stop and start. Wherever you double click. Are you saying pal? This is where it plays. You can loop sections. It's not always correct, but more times than not, I do find it does know the key that you're in. And it does pay attention to the tempo as it's changing. Another way that you can stop and start is just by clicking the time ruler right here. I find if I use a mouse, it's just easier to double click. Now, zooming in and out is really nice in Melodyne. I wish more DAWs took this into account. You just hold command and option if you're on a Mac. I'm kind of always resizing this window depending on what I'm doing. I need to dive in for some little cuts. If you're on a trackpad, you just pinch with two fingers. And this feature down here in the bottom right, this is kind of nice just if you want to resize your blobs. It, sometimes if your gain is too hot coming in here, these notes can be huge. And it kind of is difficult to see exactly where the pitch center is if you're not paying attention to the vibrato. Uh, the loop playback's really nice. Sometimes if I'm stuck on a pretty complicated part and I just don't want to keep going back and forth, engage this button right here, the top in your transport bar, and then just set your loop. And then click it again, turn it off, and move on. Uh, just do a quick run through of these no editor view options. So show note separations. It just kind of shows you what was cut and not. And as you're moving really fast, it's helpful to just see that. Sometimes when this is just sitting right next to this, it kind of can look like one note and you don't know if it's cut or not. So that's helpful. <laughs> the show tails detection. Melodyne just draws a distinction between the notes themselves and their tails. Notes being the events of like musical relevance and tails pretty much depicting the non-musically determined fading away of the sound. It's like this stuff right here. Uh, show sibilance is it's a, such a helpful part of Melodyne. I honestly find that to be one of the biggest keys. Stuff like this, this down here, 
you don't need to tune it. You don't need to move it. Sometimes it sounds unnatural when you do. So the fact that Melodyne can detect it and show it to you, such a bonus. And if it doesn't cut it for you, just cut that. Most of the time, we don't want to touch this. Uh, if you check the show fades option, the control elements belong to the fade tool are displayed besides any note you've previously edited using the fade tool. I don't really use this. It's just another nice feature if you like. Uh, the other one I like a lot is show intended notes. Pretty much a gray frame appears around each blob, which sits directly on the semitone and coincides exactly with the grid line they represent. So in other words, Melodyne's assumption based on its own analysis is showing you where it thinks the note should be. And as you move quick, it's really helpful, especially sometimes you're zoomed out. This is where, you know, this is kind of the dead center. Follow the vibrato, not just the blob, but this is really helpful visually. I personally have this turned off, highlight notes during playback, but sometimes when I'm tuning something and someone's sitting next to me watching me, it's kind of just a cool little feature to throw on. No, it's I don't like it when I'm, when I'm just by myself. And I dive into this in future videos, but monitor when editing blobs. I, I set to a quick key so I can turn it on and off. And you've been hearing this as I've been working through this. But this but this can be such a huge tool as you're tuning and not exactly sure where a note should land. Just listen to the resonance. I go over this in future videos, but you go to shortcuts. It's really important to set up quick keys. You can see I'm flipping through mine on my keyboard. It helps me navigate this, you know, just by hitting a couple of buttons. I find it takes a lot longer if you have to right click just to change a tool every time you want to do something. I'm constantly making cuts and edits and pitch drift as I navigate this program. There's a lot of other little features here. This one is a correct pitch macro. It's not, it's not really a great idea to use this too much, but I will say sometimes when I've been in a huge hurry, I do open this up, slide this down, watch what happens to the pitch drift here. Not bad. You can see it right here, straightens it out. If you do engage this, just go through the session and make sure. I can already tell you right here, this is wrong. It de if the singer was kind of off in certain areas, it's just like quantizing. It's gonna go to the nearest grid. So this goes to the nearest note, but it's it's not always gonna be correct. No, it's so right away, we have to get him up to this F sharp. No, it's no, it's it's useful to have, just make sure you go through your session after you use it. These next two macros are not anything I use a lot. If you do need to do some changes to your audio recording, I would say these Melodyne's algorithm is top notch. There's a quantize macro. You know, I, I'm mostly using this to tune vocals, but you can do a lot of really cool stuff with this. If you don't have time to automate, ultimately acts like a compressor. Once again, it's not something I use, but it's a really cool feature. Uh, the last thing I wanna to touch over for this quick setup is note assignment mode. That's this wrench right here. Anyone that came from Melodyne one through three probably had to use this all the time. But at this point in Melodyne five, I'm not using that too often. The detection or analysis pretty much gets it right where it should be. But this is used if you need to, if, if Melodyne can't really detect what the note is trying to do, some sort of growls or deep sounds, it's not really sure what it is. Um, sometimes it'll look like this. You can go into note detection mode and just like double click it and it'll come up right where it should be. That's it for today guys, hope this video was helpful. I'm currently doing a deep dive into Melodyne, Isotope RX, Ableton, Pro Tools. If you're interested, give me a follow. Thanks.